This is Dennis Palumbo, author of the award-winning Daniel Rinaldi Mysteries, and you're listening to the Dark and Stormy Book Club Podcast. Welcome to a special Dark and Stormy Book Club. We love our books, but every once in a while, we like to see a good movie, too. Enjoy. I'm Ann Dart. I'm Tracy Stormy. And I'm Kathy Knight. And together we are It Was a Dark and Stormy Book Club. A podcast for mystery lovers. Welcome. If you enjoy our show, please consider contributing to the Dark and Stormy Patreon. By becoming a patron, you will help us create better and quality content. There are also benefits to becoming a patron, such as exclusive content and Dark and Stormy merchandise. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash darkandstormybc. Check our website for the link. We appreciate any and all contributions. Thank you. This week, we're going to talk about three movies that are out now. I believe they're all on Netflix. Yes, they are. Correct. Be sure and check one or all of these out. Okay, Misty, you're going to do the first one. All right. The movie that I watched is Glass Onion, which is a Knives Out mystery. The little blurby thing that they have on Netflix is world famous detective. Is it Ben Benoit? Benoit, Benoit, Benoit Blanc heads to Greece to peel back the layers of a mystery surrounding a tech billionaire and his eclectic crew of friends. I am not gonna lie, I thought this was hysterical. I know I've seen the reviews, I've seen other people who are like, oh, it didn't live up to the first one, or it wasn't as good, or his southern accent was over the top. I don't care. I also love Clue. <laughs> Clue is a cult classic kind of movie. I feel like this is going to be something like that. It was hysterical. And are there blips? Absolutely. But I like the blips. And I like being able to figure stuff out. And I love the way that they did the different layers and you were unwrapping things as right. it went. I loved it too. I thought it was really, really good. And then I saw a little blurb. Did you catch all the Easter eggs that were in there? I did. I did, did catch the Easter eggs. Yep. Did yep. you get them all? I don't think I got them all. Number one, Glass Onion is a Beatles song. Yes. That on, I did white, on the White Album. And it plays at the very end of the movie. Yes. Benoit is married to Hugh Grant in this movie. Yes, I saw that. He was adorable. <laughs> and when he is zooming in the bathtub, did you see who he was zooming with? Oh, oh he was I zooming don't... with quite a few people. It was Angela Lansbury. Oh. Who was using the screen name of M. She wrote. <laughs> Stephen Sondheim. Yes. Natasha Leon, who I I don't know, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I love it. Right. And, and, you know, I mean, that's fun. I And I guess that kind of was the flavor of the whole movie for me, is that it was fun. You yeah. know, there's it was not meant to be a super serious midsummer murder kind of let me hide all the clues from you. So that you couldn't figure it out at the end. It was set up like a cozy mystery. You are there to play the game. I have a different opinion. Uh-oh. <laughs> all right. That's all right. Come on in with it. When the first Knives Out came out, I went to see it two times at the movies because I loved okay. it so much. And I thought the whole thing was just beautifully done. Mm -hmm. So I was so excited when this came out and I don't even think they should have called it a knives out mystery other than the fact that he's in it because it doesn't have that same intelligent feel. Oh, uh, okay. 
And I like campy things. Believe me, I, I see every Will Ferrell movie there is. So I <laughs> like Goofy. Right. But Kate Hudson, and I love Kate Hudson. I got you. She was too much. And Edward Norton, I like him too. You know, when you're reading a book and everything's perfect, everything's like they've got a million dollars, they've got this, they've got that, you kind of start to hate them a little bit. Ah. It was a little hard to get endeared to these characters. Okay. And the only person I really liked in the whole movie was the attractive black woman that's... Uh, oh, the main, the main yes, character that yeah, I really liked her. And I thought she was at least a little down to earth. If they make another one like this, I probably will not see it. But if they go back to the original format, and from what I understand, more people are feeling the way I feel. Yes, I've heard the that. The way you guys feel. <laughs> see, and I, I always find that interesting, though, because, so for instance, Years ago, I had a friend who wrote very, very spicy books, and I read one of hers, and I went into it expecting a very, very spicy book, and I got a romantic suspense novel where there was no spice almost until the end of the book. Then I went to her and I said, what happened? Like, I, the whole time I'm waiting for the spicy spice. Like, I am ready to have my cheeks be flaming red because I'm afraid other people can see what I'm reading. And it never happened. And she's like, I write both. And I was like, so what is this? And she's like, well, it's just a romantic suspense. And I was like, all right, hold on. I went back and I read it again. And, and I loved it. at it from a whole other... I think that's it what depends I mean. on your expectations. I haven't exactly. seen that's the what first Knives Out since it first came out. So I only saw it once. I, I don't think I had expectations. I think I went in thinking going to be a cozy mystery i heard it's funny and that's it and so i think it depends on how long has it been since you've seen it how many things have you seen since then and what are you willing to watch i like some edward norton stuff but he is always so freaking creepy <laughs> like in, he is creepy. is it primal? that's what i like primal fear oh oh mm, yeah that was a hard <laughs> one for me to watch Fight Club was also a hard one for me to watch. So I liked him being a different kind of creepy. Like, you knew that he was not okay from the beginning, but the mm -hmm. over-the-topness uh, really appealed to me. And so mm -hmm. I think that it, it's going to depend for people on were you ready for what was given over? Yeah. Never walked out on it. And believe me, I've walked out on movies before. Have you? So, I've never oh, yeah. walked out of her. Oh, I'll yeah. it yeah. and sleep. Yeah. Let's see. Peggy Sue got married. Oh, Walked yeah. out of that thing. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> we had yeah. to hold down to each other not to walk out on Death on the Nile. Oh, that was the weird. latest okay. one. That was awful. <laughs> so there were parts that were entertaining. And once you got past all the goofy characters, that's what I even told mom, it became a real mystery. Over but the when top. they were going around breaking every piece of glass in the yes. thing. And Edward Horton's <laughs> like, I don't care. Right. <laughs> <No>. right. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, again, I think there were definitely parts where my husband and I looked at each other and I'm like, really? Come on. Yeah. Man. My son got up and walked out because okay. he loves movies. So in the 80s, when I was in junior high, we used to have horror movie weekends. Oh. And I walked leprechaun and everything and i actually did a movie marathon with my husband shortly after we got married he used to work at blockbuster and so he oh, had the wow. top 100 movies of all time so we're watching them all and there were some good ones in there there are some that i was like no how did that all right whatever so we get to the shining and i said i've never seen this movie before and he's like what mm. how have you never seen the shining and i'm like all right i'm bracing myself so I'm watching this movie and the two little girls are in the hallway. And I said, <laughs> oh my God, pause that. And he was like, why? And I said, just, just pause it. And so I'm looking at it and I'm like, do you know that I have had nightmares about this right oh. here since <laughs> I was eight? And he's Whoa. like, really? So we kept watching and I'm like, I have seen this movie. And my brain Locked made me out. forget. <laughs> 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 so I was watching horror a little bit earlier. 
than junior high. My mom teased me on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, but I think that feeds into my enjoyment sometimes of mysteries that are over the top and silly. Like I used to love the heist movies that they put out. Monty Python is my oh, thing. Oh, yeah. A Fish Called Wanda is one. Oh, my God. Things. I love that movie. So I tend to stray more towards make me laugh while we're looking for dead bodies. So I have more of a buffer for my ridiculousness. It takes a lot to get me to say, all right, go ahead and shut that up. We have now way exceeded my desire to even kind of watch. So... I, I get it. Everybody has different opinions. Well, That's they'll go back. Go around and Speaking of a comedic bent, did anybody recognize Daryl in the movie? The guy Darryl. that kept walking by and saying, not here. Yes. And now that you've just mentioned that, I can't remember who he is. He was one of the lead detectives in the first movie. Uh, yes. And I was too busy rolling my eyes. He, so. is <laughs> Ryan, he is Ryan Johnson's best friend. Yeah. And he's been in every movie Ryan Johnson's done, and they couldn't find a part that suited him. So he said, I'll just walk. I'll, I'll just walk on. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so that's, that's great. why that's he awesome. did the not here. I do like those pairings. For the divided opinion, because I definitely have seen the divided opinion online, I do hope that they can either compromise and make it less silly and maybe bring it in a little bit to be recentered on what they did in the now, first there, one. Now, there is some things that I enjoy. I love the bathtub scene. That was, yes. that was awesome. <laughs> and I love the fact that they made him gay because yes, he, um, I he, loved you it. Know, it just was so fitting and they didn't shy away from it. They embraced it, and I think yes. that's awesome. Did you recognize the person who was giving people the shots at the beginning of the movie? I didn't even pay attention to him. I wasn't <laughs> paying attention either. It was Ethan Hawke. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> I love and, it. Now I'm going to have to go back and watch it again. And Joseph Gordon-Levitt is in the movie a lot, but he never appears on screen. Do you know what part he played? Did he, he must have been just a voice. Was he the robot? Was he the house? He was the clock. He went bong every <laughs> hour. <laughs> okay. He's that a Baltimore it. boy. We support our, was... our own. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. There are a lot of little goofy things like. Yeah, and... they, they had fun with this. It was a, a friend's get-together to yeah. uh, film this. Well, when they were younger and they were in the bar, when they were all friends together, yeah. Ed Norton comes in. He's dressed like Tom Cruise from the movie yeah. Magnolia. <laughs> and when they have the meeting where he steals the napkin, he starts dressing exactly like Steve Jobs. <laughs> there you go the show is like, I love it there were all kinds of little cameos Serena Williams right. was a virtual I did see that she was the complaint. virtual trainer she had to sit there and tell somebody asked her a question <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that movie so I won't it, hold it against you <laughs> <laughs> it was going to be a comedy it wasn't going to be serious Knives Out was basically a comedy, but it yeah, was it wasn't a that. little more intelligent, and uh, I expected more. So mm -hmm. that's where we're going to differ on that one. Okay. And uh, next up, we're going to go to the dark side. It's not going to be a comedy this time. That's all right. This one just came out. I think it's only been out like a week or two, and it's called The Pale Blue Eye. I don't know where the title comes from because I didn't. St Mom, did you see anything that had anything to do with a <laughs> pale a blue door, eye? A pale blue eye is from a telltale heart. Oh, oh so he okay. brought it around. Okay. Okay. All right. You got that. A world weary detective is hired to investigate the murder of a West Point cadet. Stymied by the cadet's 
code of silence, he enlists one of their own to help unravel the case. A young man the world would come to know as Edgar Allan Poe. Okay. The Pale Blue Eye is an American mystery thriller written and directed by Scott Coop. It was adapted from the 2003 novel of the same name. Christian Bale plays the main character, and I thought it was perfect casting. The gentleman who plays Poe, he's in the movie, this is like pre his fame. He's a cadet at West Point, and I thought they did such a good job of making him look like a young Poe, because he's kind of a different kind of guy. Yes. Now, did, do you know where he's from? No. And when I say this, you're going to be like... Edgar oh, Allan Poe, or... Yeah, the guy who played oh, no, Edgar Allan Poe. He was in Harry Potter, oh. Rise of the Phoenix. He was Dudley Dursley. Oh, wow. You really? are kidding. No, no. Dudley Dursley as an older boy. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah. He lost so. weight. <laughs> <laughs> or he might have been wearing a fat suit. I don't they, know. You never know. When I saw him, I mean, he was the spitting image of pictures. Yeah, I've it seen really, Ed really Brown did a job. And he had the creep factor, too, because even though this is before Edgar starts writing his darker stuff, he definitely has a dark side. What ends up happening is Christian Bale's character is called Augustus Landor. You know, they're kind of stymied at the academy trying to figure out there was a guy, they found him hung, but then once they found him hung, his body had been mutilated post-mortem. Huh. And it gets even weirder because even though he was hung, his feet were hitting the ground. Edgar was a good counterpart to him. And I'm telling you right now, if they made more of these with those two together, uh -huh. I would watch unless it got goofy like. <laughs> <laughs> made it into a comedy. <laughs> yeah, the, I don't, I can't imagine. But no. they did an amazing job. Have you ever seen Edward Scissorhands? Oh, yeah. Okay, you know how, like, it was very atmospheric with, you know, it's like leaves yes. falling, snow. That's how this was. You almost escaped into the background of this movie. If the acting wasn't so good, you probably would. He enlists Edgar because they are just stonewalling him. They're, there's a code of silence. They're not going to oh. give him any information. So he thought, well, maybe this little weird cadet guy who seems to know a lot because he brought some stuff, you know, he said, I just wanted you to know. And that's how they got started talking. So he approaches him about enlisting to get him to help him solve this crime. Edgar is very good with the words. There's a note that was written, so he starts to put the note together, and these two just work so well together. I just thought it was brilliant the way they did it. I'm telling you right now, there's not one thing I didn't like about this movie, and that's rare for me. I Go like ahead. the part where... Edgar Allan Poe says something, uh, what was he going to go into, law or something? And Christian Bale says, you should write or something. Mm -hmm. Something. It was just a very short little thing between the two of them. And he said, you ought to write. Well, he was a, he's a poet in this. He's he's already a, started but I mean, when he was coming up with these clues and answers to the mystery... Mm -hmm. That's when he said, you ought to write. I can't remember exactly what was said, but he's saying something to, uh, well, Augustus. <laughs> 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 and he says that his mother told him this. He asks, are you close with your mother? She said, well, she's dead, but she oh. still talks to me. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> One of the big premises is that Augustus' wife had died and he was looking for his daughter leave that at the yeah Ooh. Ooh, okay that was, so there's a lot of teary moments oh and, okay um, profound moments and you know we can't say hardly anything about the second half right <laughs> edgar ends up 
falling for the it was the commandant in uh -huh. charge of the West Point Academy. Lucy Boynton plays Lee Marquise. Uh, that's the love interest in this story okay. with Pat. Wish I could talk about the end. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it is so good. It is so maybe so, so maybe good. one of these times we should do a let's talk about movies. It's all spoilers, and it's only about. <laughs> We've done that with books before. <laughs> there you go. There you go. The ending was one of those. Did they cut it off too soon? Uh -huh. is, is something uh... else going to happen? But oh. You have got to yeah, watch it. Okay. It's, you know, it's on my list. I promise. And it, it comes in at about just under two hours. You never and, felt that it was too long. In some ways, I wish it was longer. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Ed, Ed, Edgar Allan Poe was a cadet at West Point for right. a very short time, though. Yes. And there yes. were a few murders back in that era. I I'm think sure they, there was murders. <laughs> I don't think it was ah. the same kind of murder that we're talking about. I think it was a very murdery time. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, it was so well done. That's yeah. awesome. Christian Bale just throws himself into the character. Yeah. And he generally does. You forget he's Christian Bale. You know, right. it's funny. He has a very gruff voice in this because mm -hmm. he's supposed to be weary and stuff. If I would have closed my eyes, I was like, that's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're not too far off yeah. at all because, you know, back in the day, yes. yes. <laughs> I love it. Well, and I'm yeah. always intrigued. Uh, you know, I really like actors who can be a variety of different things and sell it every single time. Uh, and so while I haven't seen it, I would definitely see it. It's on my list of things to see because I do like those different characters. I love Edgar Allan Poe. And, well, that's why I actually have the name Gabby Allen as the oh as you the got some, that's right because that's... kensington had said all right we need a pen name and i was like gabby allen and they're like wow <laughs> that was that was really fast and i'm like i talk a lot and i like edgar Allan poe all awesome. right on to the next one okay bookend us with another funny <laughs> enola holmes two i will say this millie bobby brown Yes. is a fantastic actress for as young yes. as she is. She blows Enola Holmes away. She is just amazing in this part. I liked her in Stranger Things, but in this one, she just nails it down. She is just fantastic. Enola is trying her best to start a detective agency. She rents a store and she has this little storefront where she sleeps in the back room. All these people come in and as soon as they say, you're a girl or you're so young or, and she says, I can do whatever. And then they come in and say, Sherlock Holmes is your brother? Uh -huh. is, he, is he available? So she fails at that. She just has to give it up. She cannot keep the rent paid and, and go on with all this. So she is closing up her office when this little girl comes in and she says, are you Enola Holmes? And she says, yes. She said, I need you to find someone. And she says, who are you missing? And she said, my sister. She agrees to take this little girl's case. Her sister and her are match girls at the match factory. So she takes Enola to work with her. And of course, Enola's looking everywhere. And of course, they're all by rote. They're picking up match sticks and putting them in boxes, just mind numbing stuff. And, of course, she's looking around and questioning everything that's going along. This woman comes up and says, we don't need her kind here. And 
the little girl says, but she's going to find my sister. And Nola sneaks upstairs to the office of the man who runs the sweatshop or whatever you call a matchbook shop. And she searches it and she finds a ledger and the ledger has a bunch of pages ripped out and there's a long red hair and the girl that's missing had long red hair. So she is bound and determined to find this girl and she has to finally get her brother to help and he's trying to figure out a case and he gets her to help him. Mm. It's very well done. The only thing I have is there's a couple main characters that are portrayed in different ways. Okay. Uh, if you watch the first Enola Holmes, she meets Lord Tewksbury and she gets Lord Tewksbury involved in this mystery with her. It's got some comedy, it's got some drama, it's got some little bit of love interest. It's very well done. I enjoyed it immensely. And it is based on a real happening, not in Ola Holmes, but <laughs> in, in history, the very first employee walkout that's on record was by a woman. She got the match girls all to walk out en masse from their jobs for better work. And that was an actual happening. And that's the person that's portrayed in this. So oh, okay. I would highly recommend it. Yes, I, oh. I really enjoyed this. They're written by Nancy Springer. She wrote both of them. You guys know who Guy Ritchie is, right? Oh, yes. Madonna's um, ex-husband. Yeah. Well, other than that, <laughs> that's he's all a, he's ever he's done. done. <laughs> so, he's a fabulous director, and I love, 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 love his movies. These have the feel of a Guy Ritchie movie, kind of a caper. It's yes. fast-paced, and I loved when Enola would break the third wall and talk to the audience. Yes. And it actually starts out that way when the movie starts. She's running from the police. Right. They're the getting point. ready to grab her, and she turns to the screen and says, I can explain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very well done. I really enjoy that series. I love it. Uh, I really enjoyed it myself. Last year, I went to a conference, and the woman who wrote the books oh, was really? one of the speakers. But it was via Zoom. The rest of us were in the room watching her. And she was saying that she was approached by Millie Bobby Brown, if I remember correctly, to do these movies. Oh, really? And she and her sister had read the books and had been like, I want this. I, I want to be Enola. And so they're the reason that the author was approached to sell oh, the property so to be yeah yep yep it was very interesting to mm, listen to I her wonder talk if we could get her on the show i could ask oh yeah so yeah so i really really enjoyed them i will always love henry cable but i really liked that they gave her a lot of motivation for independence and then had her run out and get it but not necessarily be stupid about it you know, sometimes when you're watching movies and it's a young girl who's doing something that she probably should not be doing, sometimes they'll have her do really ridiculous things. And I'm over here going, come on. I mean, she did take risks, but I did feel like they were calculated risks. And she was making a point to say, this is what I want and this is how I'm going to go and get it. But I, I really liked it. I loved the way she had... Lord Tewksbury teach her to dance in five minutes in the yes. ladies' room. <laughs> yes, yes. But because I enjoy the ones that are intelligent. 
especially in that venue. Like if I know it's going to be a Monty Python-esque, again, going back to the first movie and your expectations. If I know that I'm watching The Greatest Race or something like that, I have a certain mindset. But if you're going to do Enola Holmes, especially after the first one, I wanted all of those elements in this one. She's inventive and she's quick on her feet. But she is not to the point of stupidity, which I very, and then luck, I guess, is what that comes down to. Well, what I really enjoyed about this one is that they gave Helena Bottom Carter a bigger role in that. Yes. Oh, she's so much fun. Yeah, I love her. It was like, because of all the stuff that happened in the Match Factory, very empowering movie. It made you walk away saying, I can do it. (laughs) Absolutely. And I think bring to light the very real struggle. You hear about walkouts. You hear about, you know, fighting for women's rights. But we enjoy all of that now in a way that, you don't necessarily see the things that they were risking to have a better life. And yeah. I, I think it was really cool to have it be a part of the story. So it wasn't just a story about the match girls. It, they framed it in a way that you were going to, I feel, pay attention to the historical aspect, but also very much enjoy the frame on the outside and maybe pick up more because it wasn't just a depressing story about the first walkout and a yeah, people dying. Well, they had them working in the theater and they had yes. that whole yeah um, i have a little information it says that the third one is called the case of the bizarre bouquets okay i hope it does come out <laughs> I would love that. Oh, I, you I can't always so. count on Netflix. No, though. I, I mean, know. You can, Netflix... you can cut that out if you don't want them to hear that. No, they... I, I'm right there with you. They've cut some of my favorite shows. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. I need you oh. to bring that back, please. Do you yeah. ever see a Santa Clarita diet? <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. that show and they got rid of it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. We used to watch uh, iZombie also. I won't lie. I'm not a huge zombie fan. I always get totally squicked out with like the blood and stuff, but that was a good one. But yeah, when they cut those things off, I'm like, I am invested in this. What did you just do? Why? You can't leave me hanging like that. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the characters in this movie I really liked was Edith. Yes. It's kind of the sense behind all this she was the rock that everybody kind of leaned on Enola depended on her and her mother depended on her and even Sherlock depended on her she was somebody that was there as a a leader role I misspoke that Enola Holmes 3 has still not been confirmed by Netflix, but we have a feeling it's only a matter of time, considering that its opening week got 64.1 million hours viewed. Okay. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> sure they'll put that on again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. The only thing that was missing in this one, and I cannot remember the actor's name, but Mycroft was missing from the this one and apparently there was a scheduling conflict so he okay the it. only real problem i had with it was the actors they had so many of them were in harry potter and <laughs> like the police inspector he was mr weasley and it was hard to see him as a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? Well, especially Harry Potter. I mean, there are, what, eight of those? So yeah. you, you spent a lot of time seeing him. The, my first movie that I watched with Daniel Radcliffe after Harry Potter was The Woman in Black. And so, and this was in a movie theater, so it's not like I've got distractions going on. But I struggled for probably the first half of the movie to see him as anything by Harry Potter. And I'm like, Harry, what are you doing? Don't that's, do that. Come on that's now. It. Because know, they become iconic. 
and, and wear that, your glasses. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and your, your lightning bolt. Yeah, your lightning yeah. bolt. Yeah. Because they have become iconic. And we watched him grow up in that particular role. And he didn't do very much outside of that, if I remember correctly, while he was Harry Potter. Ron Weasley is another one. He did a yeah. movie, I want to say, with Simon Pegg. And watching him in that, he was totally different from... Yeah. Who he, and yeah. I was like, I don't think I like this one <laughs> because. But you know what's what funny? To be. We see these characters we grew up with in Harry Potter, and we're identifying the role yes. that played there. Yeah, but not Helena Bonham Carter because she does so many other things that we're not faced when we see her in another part because she's a character actor she's right she I, never, that's what i'm saying she's he's not almost always though the same person even in enola holmes she is not that far off from bellatrix right. and she's not as mean obviously she's she's, anarchist. She's, but she you know, the same you know just like when she was in sweeney todd it's the same feel to what yeah. she does, which was the same feel to what she does when she was in um, Alice, in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Right. So, and she's married to Tim Burton. So, I mean, well, not anymore. So. I mean, she was, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> she was married to Tim Burton, which I think you need to be a specific kind of person to be yeah. able to, to, <laughs> to have breakfast with that particular personality. <laughs> yes. Now, I am curious, I have not seen it, is his portrayal of Weird Al. See, yeah, now, so. I will struggle with that, no matter what his portrayal is, because <laughs> it's just so it's a weird world of Misty. My husband, Daniel's best friend from high school, was the fan club president for Weird Al Yankovic. So when Weird Al was in high school, they had the Volcano Worshippers Club because he didn't like any of the clubs that were available. So he started one of his own as a volcano worshiper. They <laughs> re-brought that into our high school. And so Weird Al Yankovic grew up like 40 minutes from where my husband and I went to school. So at Christmas, we went down and had Christmas with Weird Al Yankovic's parents. And then Weird Al Yankovic showed up. <gasps> and oh, wow. So I have a different picture of Weird Al Yankovic that I don't know that I'm going to be able to allow Daniel Radcliffe. Well, there's pictures online, and it, I don't know. I just don't. I mean, I, I, I've heard <laughs> that he did a good job, but I, I, it'll be strange. Well, that gives you three new and upcoming movies to watch and enjoy. And be sure and read the book that The Pale Blue Eye and... The children's books of Enola Holmes are available, too. Right. And see how that compares to the movie itself. Trivia. Last week's question was, how long did it take Mickey Spillane to write his first mystery novel? A. Three years. B. A month. C. Nine days. Or D. Three weeks. The answer is C, nine days. Mickey and his wife wanted to buy a country house in the town of Newburgh, New York, 60 miles north of New York City. So Spillane decided to boost his bank account by writing a novel. He wrote the novel, I, the Jury, in just nine days. This week's question is... In the Sue Grafton Kinsey Melhone mystery series, what California town is the, the fictional town of Santa Teresa based on? A. Santa Rosa, B. Malibu, C. San Diego, or D. Santa Barbara? Good luck! That brings us to the end of another episode. We thank you for joining us. We hope you'll join us next week. And remember, life would be boring without a little mystery. Bye. Bye. Oh, we did it. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs>